So you're getting into UX design and you're feeling like your design eye is a bit subpar. What do you do about it? Let me give you an idea. Welcome back to Design Today, everyone. I'm your host, Dylan Winspear, and I'm excited to be here today. I've had a good little break over this last week and I've been completely off the grid working in the mountains on one of my passion projects. It felt good to disconnect and I appreciate you for allowing me that opportunity. Before we jump into today's rant, I've got a little message for those of you listening on YouTube. This is the last time that you'll see my face for new episodes of Design Today. Starting next week, I'll be taking the Design Today podcast to just the podcasting apps out there. I've had a few people reach out and say that they'll miss the video versions, and I do great, greatly appreciate those messages, and I hope that you understand my reasoning. Design Today takes significant time to produce. I love it, don't get me wrong, but I've got other time commitments and other places that I need to put my effort. Uh, as you might know, I'm a family man with three young kids who could never get enough time from me. I also work full time as a design manager at Domo, a publicly traded company here in Utah. And I freelance quite a bit on the side just to help keep my skills sharp. All that to say that I had to find a way to get some of my time back. Over the last two plus years, I found that adding video increases production by four or five times. Anyone who's done video post-production will know that the number might even be a little bit low. With the majority of Design Today listeners tuning in weekly on the podca bleh, bleh, podcasting apps, that's one place that I could quickly get my time back. So if you're tuning in on YouTube, I'd hate to lose you. And I encourage you to subscribe on any of the popular podcasting apps out there, including the Apple Podcast app, the Spotify app, uh, and all the other major podcasting apps. Finally, let me cram this last little promo in here. The window is closing to receive 25% off a coaching session with me. These coaching sessions have been a complete blast over the last couple months. And as my birthday lands in September, I wanted to give you a little gift back. Uh, so for those of you who are interested, you can sign up for a coaching session with me. It's an hour long session. And if you use the promo code BDAYGIFT at checkout, you'll receive a 25% discount. We can use that hour to help you get unstuck in your career in any way. Uh, we can look at your portfolio, your resume. Uh, we can talk about interviewing skills. We can do a variety of things. So sign up, use that promo code BDAYGIFT, and we can get those things cranking. On today's rant, I wanted to chat about a little technique that I give almost all of my UX interns in their first couple of weeks. First, I need to set a little disclaimer here. Yes, this is a UX podcast. Does interface design come into play in traditional UX schooling programs? Well, it depends. In a 13-week boot camp, probably not. Many of the boot camps I work closely with have moved on from teaching UI design and they've just relied on their students using component libraries that are already out there. That's all good and gravy, but I still think that the majority of UX design positions require a bit of UI work as well. And many of those may not have component libraries for you to lean on. This means that if you're feeling weak in the UI skill set, this could come as a hindrance to your higher ability. In any case, maybe you just enjoy the UI side of design as well, and you're looking for a way to improve it. Don't let anyone tell you that UI is unnecessary. Uh, even if it's something that you enjoy doing, that's good enough reason. I enjoy UI, UI design. I find UI design to be relaxing and almost therapeutic. So for whatever your reason is, whatever you want your reason to be, if you're looking to improve your UI skills, here's a little activity that I have almost any of my UX interns do in their first couple of weeks. I call it the daily copycat challenge. Each day on top of their other responsibilities, I ask them to take an hour or two hours max working on this activity. To start, we sit down together and identify a dozen or so UIs that we find together on Behance or Dribble. We're looking for UIs that are just really pretty. We don't look at all the functionality behind the design. This is strictly a UI challenge. With a dozen or so of those projects screenshotted or saved, I ask my interns to pull them into Sketch, which is the program of choice that we use at Domo right now. And I ask them to copy those designs as close to pixel perfect as possible. Well, Dylan, how is copying someone else's work gonna get them any better at design for themselves? What I found is that when you do a dozen or so of these challenges back to back, you start to pick up on themes and principles. For example, after doing a few of those challenges, you'll quickly learn that nobody is using pure black for type. Even though it looks really dark, it might be black with 80% transparency. You might also realize that whites 
might not actually be pure white at all. And instead, it's got a little hint of gray to it. Huh, pretty interesting. You'll do a few more of these and realize that buttons all seem to do fairly similar things. The type might be generally all caps, and the padding around the buttons might uh, be pretty consistent as well between all of them. That's a good thing to know. There are other items that you'll pick up on as well, things like iconography, rounding corners, drop shadows, all those things. I can't stand seeing new designers screw up on drop shadows. They tend to go really dark and really heavy. Do a few copycat challenges and you'll see how simple and light successful UIs are using drop shadows. At the end of this, I don't want you posting this work or adding it to your portfolio. That's not the purpose of this activity. But I do hope that you can start picking up on the best practices of successful UI design and begin to learn how to use these successful principles in your next UI project. I also hope this allows you to gain some confidence in your ability to do UI, or UI work in the future. If you've listened to this podcast for any amount of time, chances are you've heard me say something along the lines of practice is key. You need opportunities to try new things and fail, learn, and repeat. This is one of those ways to get those opportunities and to learn UI design. Does this substitute a visual design degree? No, absolutely not. And hopefully nowhere in here uh, have you thought that that's what I was saying. There is so much to learn about color theory, typography, iconography, and that list goes on. And you're not going to learn those things just by doing a few copycat challenges. But you can start to scratch the surface, maybe even spark some interest in additional studies around visual design. I've seen my interns do this for a week or so and have renewed confidence in their UI abilities. They tend to work in design systems already at Doma, but every now and then something comes up and they need to think outside of the box and a visual eye will come in handy. I know that's not an unusual situation to many businesses out there. You're the only one who can assess your ability here. So if you're feeling like your design eye can be sharpened, then try out some copycat challenges and let me know what comes of it. End rant. Hope you guys have a good one. I'll see you next week.